Excuse me, little dog. There it goes. It is an absolutely spectacularly gorgeous. I am talking an over the top beautiful day here in the collapse of everything unfolding here at Bugs in a Jar Farm and all around the planet on this postcard perfect Sunday, August 6, 2023, where we might be looking, might be looking at our first 80 degree day in the hottest summer uh, in the history of the planet. But anyway, it is a special day here at, uh, at Bugs in a Jar Farm and more importantly here at Collapse Chronicles because uh, I woke up without a, uh, without a Chronicle of the Collapse uh, medium day, daily digest just did not have the level of doom and gloom that I was hoping for so I went over to the mainstream media uh, to see what was on their mind and guys right here on Yahoo News coming out of this uh, place called Salon Magazine is Salon Magazine, would you consider that mainstream media? I, I, I think it pretty much is, but, but uh, all kidding aside, good for Yahoo News and hallelujah for Salon Magazine for bringing out an article, uh, an interview with some man I have never heard of in my entire life until this day, this is the single most spot-on article about what is going on on this planet, spelling it out in unambiguous mainstream media, plain English, uh, what is going on on this planet and why this planet is in the shape we're in. And there's eight billion reasons for the shape this planet is in. And that is the 8 billion cancer cells uh, eating their host called humans. And this is a long piece with uh, a long introduction and then an interview. Uh, I'm thinking my camera very well uh, might crap out on me, might collapse. So anyway, if the camera shuts down and I'm just here talking to myself I will put the link on the story and uh, you should just shut me up and go read it yourself but until my camera collapses I will read it for you from Salon Magazine Are humans a cancer on the planet? A physician argues that civilization is truly carcinogenic and this is an article written by someone named Troy Farah. Now Troy is not the uh, the physician. We will get to the interview in a minute but Troy is not a clueless moron uh, either. So uh, we're gonna hear from Troy to set up this interview and then we'll get to the interview here in a minute. But take it away, Troy Farah and Salon Magazine. And let's look into the question, are humans a cancer on the planet? The answer to the question is obviously humans are a cancer on the planet. Take it away, Troy. Humans have existed on this planet for a relatively short time, yet we have had a major impact on it, dramatically altering its biodiversity and shifting its global climate in only a few centuries. The burning of fossil fuels has cooked the globe so much that ecosystems are threatening to fail 
completely out of balance, which could accelerate the ongoing mass extinctions caused by our predilection for exploiting nature. There is a very distinct possibility we could trigger our own extinction or at the very least greatly reduce our population while completely altering the way we currently live. Little things like going outside during daylight hours or growing food in the dirt could become relics of the past, along with birds, insects, whales, and many other species. War, famine, pestilence, and death, that dreaded equine quartet, threaten to topple our dominance on this planet. We, meaning humans, are destroying our own home, sawing off the very branch we rest on. Those who refute this reality, or climate change deniers, misinterpret the same sets of data showing a clear anthropological cause as being part of, quote, the natural cycle of the planet. Things are warming, they argue, and that is normal. Only it really isn't normal. Climatologists and scientists have been sounding the alarm for decades. Global temperatures and planetary homeostasis are spiraling out of control and we are to blame. The climate crisis is no longer a hypothetical future. It is the tangible present, present and the evidence is clear in every grueling heat wave, not so uncommon freak storm and raging wildfire. On the opposite extreme is a vocal minority, the accelerationist and nihilist. Is it nihilist or nihilist? I have heard it. I have heard this word pronounced both ways. Being one, I, I should learn how to pronounce it. I actually, I'm going to start saying nihilist. I like the sound of that. On the opposite extreme is a vocal minority the accelerationist and nihilist who accept that humanity is overwhelmingly destructive to nature but out but argue our extinction would be a welcome relief if, if, if there's any misunderstanding out there sam mitchell of collapse chronicles is an accelerationist nihilist uh, who believes that our extinction would be a welcome relief to every other uh, species of earthling we share this planet with. Uh, and, until humans are extinct, this planet is going down the toilet, and then it's just, and then it's going to have to recover from us. Anyway, I received many such comments on social media after interviewing Peter Ward, a paleontologist and professor at the University of Washington, about his Medea hypothesis, a theory that life is not a benevolent force and often causes its own extermination. Many species in Earth's history became so successful that they wiped themselves out and we could do the same. In response to that article, many readers said something such as, quote, humans are a virus and should be eradicated. I honestly don't remember reading that article, 
but maybe uh, I just forgot about it uh, because whoever commented humans are a virus and should be eradicated uh, obviously has gotten to the bottom of the layers of the onion and come up with the only uh, logical place to go. Obviously, inducing human extinction is an outcome for which only a very cynical personality would advocate. <clears throat> A very cynical personality I consider that to be a compliment and an honor but what about the first part of that statement are humans really like a virus a pathogen a cancer dr. Warren Hearn a Colorado based physician and author of the new book Homo ecophagus, a deep diagnosis to save the earth, argues that human civilization indeed has many similarities with cancer. This is not a metaphor, but rather a literal diagnosis, and it can be addressed in the same way that an actual cancer diagnosis can be the first step to treatment. Salon, meaning Troy, recently spoke with Hearn about his new book, which acts partially as a memoir, textbook, dire diagnosis, and poetic ode to a disintegrating planet discussing the impl implications for such an urgent prognosis, a new name for the human species that reflects our true nature and how we can still fix this crisis. Oh yes, this interview has been condensed and lightly edited for clarity but guys I see this uh, camera warning light is uh, is broken and uh, I really want you to hear what this Dr. Hearn has to say so I am going to uh, break this up and to two videos this will be part one the introduction and then uh, we will uh, come back for the actual interview you know if uh, if I was still doing interviews on Collapse Chronicles uh, I, I would make this dude the number one person to bring on the show but I'm sure that uh, Michael Michael Dowd Michael, I, I'm quite sure you are on the case, and uh, so you can look forward to Michael Dowd's interview with this fellow coming out on his channel uh, in the near future, if it's not already been published on Michael's channel. So uh, we're going to come back with Salon's interview in just one minute. Bye, guys.